Have y'all seen the Barbie movie yet? Yeah, okay, lie, yes, or some no's. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm very excited to see it. Uh, mainly because of what it's doing to white women. This is crazy. <laughs> This is wild. What? What is happening? Like, I haven't seen it yet. I don't know what's happening in the movie, but white women are walking out militant as hell. This shit is Malcolm X for white women. This is fucking crazy. Dude, all of, all of my white female friends that walk out of the movie are like, maybe we should do something about the Supreme Court. I'm like, jeez. What is happening in the movie? It is wild. This shit is like 300 for blondes that were in sororities. This is crazy. They just walk out of the movie like, I wish a fucking man would try to give me directions right now. I wish. Ooh, I wish. I'm like, oh, okay. God damn. That's wild. I, I used to be a, a very chill person. Nothing ever bothered me. Nothing ever got to me. Everything rolled off my shoulder. Turns out I was just 17. I should have been chill. This, I wasn't paying any rent yet or anything. Now I'm in the real world. I'm very upset. This is, this is horrible. And it sucks because when you're at every stage of your life, you feel stress. Every, every part of your life, you felt stress. But as a kid, you think you know stress. Like you're sure that you know real stress as a little kid. Most stressed out person I ever met in my entire life was in elementary school. We were both six, and this is the most stressed out. To, the, to date, I've never met anybody like this. This kid was walking around like he had a full pension he was about to lose. Like, he, he would crush his juice boxes when he got done with just so much, like, ugh. Like he had a mortgage. It was crazy. I'll never forget this. There was one time, I went to a Montessori school, so we, we got nap time a little longer than other kids. And I remember we both six years old laying there. It was nap time, and nap time was the only time the teachers got a real break from us. But they needed all of us to be asleep, and he was just eyes wide, looking at the, <laughs> looking at the ceiling, <laughs> you know, thinking about an annuity or something. Just like. <laughs> and sure enough, teacher walks up to him very sweetly. I remember because I was laying next to him. She's like, "Is there?" Is there anything I can get you? Or like, do you need an extra pillow or something? And like, I wasn't asleep, but I was dozing. You know, there wasn't anything on my six-year-old mind. I was chilling. You know? But what he said woke me right up. This, it was the wildest. So she's like, do you need anything? Is there anything I can get you? And he turns to her and said, naps don't help when your soul is tired. So, Whoa! Little man, what have you been through? What's happening right now? Oh, it's terrifying. It was crazy. I, w I went, to, um, <laughs> went to college for design. And it's funny how when you're graduating college, it, right at the end is when they tell you you could have not done any of this. It's like the dean is ha like shaking your hand and handing your diploma and whispering in your ear. It's like, you didn't have to. <laughs> and I remember I was just looking for any job that I could get out of college and I started working at a grocery store. And I told them that I majored in design and they were like, oh, you can design how we put up the grapes. <laughs> And the grocery store that I worked at, I was in Chicago at the time, and it was a horrible neighborhood. It was, it was very bad. This was like an epically bad neighborhood. We had so many different characters, because we had, there was a clinic at, at one end, like it was like a methadone clinic, so a lot of people that were on or trying to get off drugs would just be around the store. And then there was also uh, a mental facility. So the people who got the mental facility but didn't have anywhere to go, would just hang out at the grocery store. So I was constantly in danger. <laughs> I got used to it. And I remember we had this guy, he was a pigeon man. 
And my man, I don't know if he was homeless or not, but all I know is he filled the parking lot with pigeons. Pigeons love this dude so much. This nigga was usher for pigeons. I remember one time there was this guy walking into the store that I don't know exactly what he said because I was putting up the cart, so I overheard something rude being said, but I don't know exactly what it was. But he was like, you know, why don't you get a job, you piece of shit? Like, said, said something that was way too mean to just be passing somebody to walk in a grocery store. It was wild. Pigeon man didn't do anything, just stood there chill. Got a couple pigeons here, a couple pigeons here. Just let it go. Rolled right after shoulder. And then, then the guy's walking out of the store. And this is gonna make me sound crazy. I'm just telling you what I saw, all right? Basically, that guy walked past Pigeon Man with his cart full of groceries, and then Pigeon Man looked at one of the pigeons and went, and then, and then the pigeon flew into the back of that dude's head. And I like, I'm not saying this man talks to pigeons. I'm just saying he did that, and then the bird did that. That's all. I'm just relaying information. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. I'm just, he, he went, brr, 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 and then the pigeon kamikaze the back of that dude's head. <laughs> Almost knocked that man out. It was crazy. And then that's the other thing, too, is that there were so many characters that worked there, but then nobody warned me. So I just started working there. But when you work in a bad neighborhood, they don't make the people that come and frequent the store part of the training. They should do that. They should be like, all right, look, on Wednesday, there's going to be a nigga in a dress. He going he gonna to walk in. He going to start fighting everybody, all right? So you just want to take cover, right? They don't do any of that. They're just like, all right, and then this is how you fill out your time sheet. Like, they act like it's a normal place. It was not a normal place. And so, so then there was one day where this dude, <laughs> this dude came in, walked in very casually, stopped right after the sliding doors, took off his shirt, took off his pants and went, I'ma fuck everybody. <laughs> and then everyone started leaving the store. Everyone casually started filing out like it was time to go. No one protested, no one, no one even stood to see if he meant it. Everyone was just like, all right, should have got here earlier. <laughs> Everyone's like, I was ringing up a woman in my line, and uh, this old, like, 80 year old woman, literally, I'm not even quoting her, she was like, fuck those grapes, not getting fucked today, and just keeps walking out. It was insane. Because then, then, this is the worst part, too. They never had good security guards there. So then the man screams, right? And apparently he just does this. That's, that's what, he does it so much that customers were like, this is when we have to leave. This is not, the bread's not worth it. It's fine, you know what I mean? And then, the, <laughs> All right, so they, I don't know the name of it, so I can't put them on blast or anything, but like they used this security guard service that was the worst security guard service I've ever seen in my life. I don't know where they were getting these security guards because these people, not only were they not trained to like, they, they didn't like secretly know Krav Maga or something like that. They also weren't big. So then <laughs> this man rolls in, he's like, I'm a fuck everybody and then everyone starts leaving and then the security guard who I hadn't even noticed that day until this moment because then I started scanning the grocery store for him security guard I see him in the corner of my eye he's walking towards me and he's over here <laughs> hobbling towards me my man is 76 years old with a bad knee and just like I think a metal ankle I don't know what was going on with his legs and he walk over and whisper in my ear he's like can you say something to him <laughs> I was like Can I say something? <laughs> I was like, can I say something? I just repeated it back until he answered something. I was like, can I say something to him? Can I say something to him? Like, can I say that? And finally, he's like, look, young blood, I asked them to give me a gun, and they said no. All right. <laughs> they know I can't fight. I would have cleared all this out if I had my pistol with me. And then we just started, like, because then the dude is just walking throughout the store in his underwear. And so we're just conversing about what to do. We're literally like, well, I'm not, look, they pay me to put up the grapes. Like, I, I'm not really here for all this other stuff. And then, and then he's like, gen he, this man is genuinely floating with me. He's like, you think I only live 12-minute walk away? 
should I go get my gun? Like, and then we can just, look, I can go get my gun. We can act like you found it, right? And I was like, don't, no. Why would I find your gun that's at your house? And, he, and then, then my man said, it, he said it was a 12 minute walk, but he's like, but you know, I walk a little slow. So you're gonna have to hold, you're gonna have to hold him down for about half an hour. Because, you know, with this leg, you know, it's been troubling me. It's, you know, it's been raining and shit, so I can't, I can't move like I used to. So then I'm, I'm going to go home. I'm going to get the gun. I was like, it takes you 30 minutes to do a 12-minute walk? He's like, yeah, so it's going to be an hour. Like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be quite a while before I can come. But as soon as I pop him, I bet he'll never be back here again. I was like, are you even a good shot? Like, this is... Like, at a certain point, you start considering it. My man is just, like, walking down the aisles. There's no customers in the store. He left, but he never came back. Like, I don't know. I don't know what happened to him. I think he quit. I do. I think he quit when he got home. I think he hobbled home, and then he was like, nah. <laughs> you all were great. Thank you so much. Keep it going. Keep it going. Josh Johnson, ladies and gentlemen.